Hey folks, AshleyAllThingsIndustry.com. We're sitting with Dr. Partridge and a few of my resident clowns, or colleagues, sorry. <laughs> I get that, you know, those words get mixed up. And Dr. Partridge has been doing our surgery, oral surgery for General Dentist uh, series, and we were ta I was talking with him about needles today, and he's uh, agreed gracefully to talk about uh, his knowledge in needles. He has a background in engineering, so a few things just popped up. I'm like, sir, can you talk about it? And he said, sure. Without further ado. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mark. Uh, my knowledge is uh, not that extensive, it's just mostly on the needles that I use. And uh, I talk to a lot of people and they're really not aware of the difference in the needles. Uh, we're not talking about the suture, just the needle itself and its uh, implications. Uh, there are different shapes, of course, on the needles. Uh, the one I use the most frequently is a, uh, a what they call a C9 uh, half circle reverse cutting needle. And if you look on the package there, uh, you can see, let's see, I forget what my package is. There, there's, it's always labeled on there exactly where it is. This is C6 here, oops. Hmm. C9 here, got right there, it's right there. If you look on it, you'll see it has a cross section of what the needle looks like and the number on there, and it'll say half circle on it. So this is a C9, one half uh, circle, and it's a, a reverse cutting. Uh, the other one we use quite frequently is a, uh, a 3 8 circle. A C6 needle, and it's usually we use this with a surgical gut or, or a chromic gut. And again, it's marked this. It'll have a marking right on it. It'll say C6 3 8 circle reverse cutting. We also have some very fine uh, needles. The RB1 one, one half here. Let's yeah. see. Uh, where's the RBs? Oh, sorry. As you can tell, we're doing this ad lib. <laughs> yeah. oh, here, here's one package right there. Okay. RB1. Again, it's marked exactly. Uh, the little round circle or the triangle is the cross section of the needle and then the outline there is whether it's a half or three, uh, three eighths or whatever. Uh, I usually like the half inch circle because uh, when I'm doing most of my, my ex exodontia, uh, it's a little bigger needle and uh, you can go through both the lingual and the buckle flap with one pass. With a 3 8 inch circle, it's hard to get a good grip on the needle. And I'll show you why. If you'll see the diagram of the needle, this is a typical needle, and the top one third of it is swedge. In other words, it's a little round tube and they just squeeze it around the suture which comes out this end up here. And so this is all round and if you grab that with a hemostat, it's just going to roll around. So really the only working part is this this part back here, the triangle, which is the cutting edge out here. And you have to grab this with a hemostat, and then so only this part of the needle is actually effective. So if you have a 3 8 inch circle needle, and uh, you know one third of that is swedge, then you really only have about one fourth of a circle, and it's kind of hard to do any, uh, go through both flaps. Now it's good for perio and for real fine surgery, but when you're doing uh, buccal lingual flaps on uh, surgery, you can usually get both flaps at one time. Uh, I'll demonstrate here a little bit. Uh, if you can see this needle here, if you grab at the very end, right where the suture enters the end of it, it will really usually just kind of roll around pretty easily. But if you get down a little further on the needle, where you get into the triangle cross section and lock it on there, this part of it, then it doesn't doesn't rotate for much easier. Did you know that? No, dude, no so, idea. So when you're going through thick, uh, thick tissue, it doesn't it doesn't uh, roll in there. And that's why I like the half needle, because you can go through both the buckle and the lingual flap without the thing rolling around. Now it is reverse cutting, it's on the back side. If the uh, inside was cut, every time you pull it through, this thing would act like a scapella and you just cut right through mm. the tissue. So that's why it's on the reverse cutting side there. Almost like backside cutting. Backside cutting, yeah. Uh, again, for real delicate tissues, I don't usually use this too much in oil surgery if you're doing perio or some kind of split thickness flap. Uh, this, this whole needle, this is kind of hard to see. It's all round, just like that from front to back. So this needle will pass through tissue with doing minimum damage to the tissue, but it's also, it's very hard to grab a hold of. It's gonna flip around on you quite a bit there too, but you're doing delicate surgery, so hopefully you don't need a good uh, grip on it. Maybe this castro VAO uh, forceps or something like that would be appropriate for something delicate like that. So for delicate surgery, this perfectly round suture is fine for a small one. Uh, if you're doing a little heavier surgery, particularly the thick type of flaps we use in oral surgery. I like the half circle uh, reverse cutting like that so you can get a good grip on it and go through both flaps at the same time. So again, look on the on the on on your suture cover and uh, you, you'll see it's it's marked on there what type of uh, suture it is, I mean, what type of a needle it is, and then whether it's a half or a full circle. And if you go through the catalog, you'll see there's probably 20 different types of, uh, of cross sections and, and, and three eighths and half, in, and half circles. 
uh, combined with all different suture material, whether it's vicol or gut or chromic gut or whatever. So, uh, when are you using chromic gut, sir? Versus well, gut? chromic gut lasts a little longer for deep tissues. Uh, for something you're really concerned about falling out real soon, you'll use that. Uh, I use it. I like plain gut because for most oral surgery, after you know the fibrin clot is pretty well formed within 24 hours or less. So after that, I don't know that you really need a plain gut that much or need a suture that much. Uh, deep deep tissues you, you want to go to uh, chromic gut or your vicol uh, and of course the uh, skin I usually use nylon and it's uh, oh, yeah, very, awesome. very fine nylon yeah five lot <coughs> nylon and proline and use it yeah proline yeah you want to take that out usually after about three to five days the longer you leave it in there the more it's going to scar but if you take it out too soon it stretches and it's going to scar too so um, about three to five days usually on that the last thing I wanted to add was what I watched this morning with uh, mm -hmm. the oral surgeon was using the the, uh, the the circular mm -hmm. that's what do we call that the the RB one mm -hmm. or SH and he used it because there was no cutting so it was only one uh, initial incision with the tip and that's it yes exactly. so it's not as it's passing through and then you're not going to sever the tissue if you're, yeah if you're trying to pull some delicate mucosa in a place and even with a reversing cut you risk cutting through the tissue there so that's why you use that uh, perfectly round one for like I say for delicate perio surgery all right well thank you very much sir okay appreciate it that was good.